basically like as a MCA fresher, it is a bit difficult to get a job. College and companies didn't allow me to sit in a placement. They never asked my like degree, like what I am. Hi everyone, welcome back to Learning Bridge. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. So in this podcast, we will be having a discussion with MCA student. I know this was the pending request. Many of you already asked that bring someone from BCA MCA background who has cracked really good companies. So finally, I have brought someone from that background, and his journey was definitely very inspirational and full of side hustle because we all are aware with the typical challenges of streams like BCA MCA. So in this podcast, we will ask such kind of question to him. And guys, after completing his college, he started his professional career with twelve thousand per month salary. can you imagine and just because of his confidence amazing skill sets and continuous efforts he managed to crack amazing product based companies and amazing startup like yellow dot ai where he is earning 10 times more of his previous salary so that's why this podcast is going to be really really amazing he will answer all such questions his experience and how did he get these kind of opportunities what happened in the mca what challenges did he face and how was everything for him and journey till this point so watch this podcast till the very end at least the folks who were asking me to bring someone from the bcmc background and if you like this video then make sure to give a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel then do subscribe and press the notification icon as well and we all know to crack good product based companies programming and data structures algorithm understanding is really really important and here is the platform coding ninjas which can help you in that journey and they are really really popular for their content their course quality and efficient teaching assistant support so let me quickly show you the kind of courses they have prepared for you so if you want to start everything from the beginning they have courses in different languages for the dsa and programming and those languages are like c++ java python and they've also prepared the courses for the core subjects like operating system and most important the competitive programming course where you can improve your problem solving skills apart from that they have courses for the development side as well that too with the new and updated tech stacks like node js react js and many others and if you are a data professional you want to make your career into the big data domain then they have the advanced courses like the premium courses for the machine learning and data science similarly for the full stack development and android development with kotlin so definitely you can see they have created amazing quality courses so if you want to land into your dream job then you can start your journey with coding ninjas today to enroll yourself in these courses you can use the link which is in the description and you will get extra 20% discount on top of the early bird discount so just grab this opportunity and register yourself for these amazing courses as soon as possible so let's quickly jump on to our podcast part so thank you so much manpreet for joining this podcast why don't you introduce yourself to my audience and what was your background hi shashank first of all thanks for having me on your podcast sorry my name is manpreet singh and i am uh, from ludhiana punjab okay. and i done my mc from gurunanak dev engineering college ludhiana and i am a 2018 pass out and i started my journey from a very small company in ludhiana company name was ori basis technologies mm-hmm. so i worked there uh, like for more than a year as a full stack developer so then in 2019 i came to bangalore and i joined a startup company named traction so i worked there for almost 2 years then i uh, like recently i switched to like a new company uh, that is uh, yellow ai so i am working there as a st1 and we know like most of the people even i have done mca and uh, prior to that bsc computer science so actually i know what are the challenges with those guys who are doing bc mc and they have a lot of concern about the job opportunities so what challenges did you face to get your first job being from a tier 3 college and even from a mca stream what challenges uh, did you face yeah like actually like as a mca fresher it is a bit difficult to get a job in a, like even in a campus placement so especially for a development role yeah. like as most of the companies coming to colleges are service based companies and for mca students they are majorly hiring for uh, like support roles or even some companies were hiring for bpa so like it was like a little difficult for me and uh, like there is one uh, thing i would like to tell you so like i was having a one, one backlog in my first semester oh. but like before this like uh, placement season i cleared my backlog but like uh, for some reason like the final result was uh, like uh, pending on the university side mm-hmm. so i was having my like provisional result that was like i was all clear in all subjects but like unfortunately my college and company didn't allowed me to sit in a placement so like uh, infosys and accenture were the major companies the, those were coming to my college mm-hmm. so i was not like allowed to sit there That's so bad. that was like a uh, thing in my final semester i joined like uh, my first company or business as an intern Mm-hmm. so like uh, and apart from ori business i got a placement offer from sapien globals mm-hmm. from for a qa role okay. but like i didn't want to like continue the qa role so i joined ori business technologies mm-hmm. like uh, they offered me a full time role later on during my internship like in in the colleges there will be different streams like most of the time we need to compete with btechs right 
so what challenges were there as a student who is doing mca yeah actually like like even in even from like college perspective they were like preferring btech students mm-hmm. btech students are going to like some companies for like they are giving like uh, getting sessions from like company experts mm-hmm. but there are no such thing for like mca student like even like our, our, our teachers are like just focus on mostly on theory like we, we didn't provide any like practical knowledge so like lab like lab was only there for attendance just we need to we just go there and sit in front of computer for one or two hours we used to play games or like search the internet or like uh, we are like uh, Frankly, we used to download movies because internet speeds were really good in my college. <laughs> But like, yeah. So no technical knowledge was there like in college. How good you were in programming and like DSA and development part? Because in most of the colleges, we don't get a proper environment or culture or guidance for for these things, right? And since you were doing MCA, so it could have been again a very very difficult thing for you. So if you were not that good, so how did you improve this part to land into a good job? Yeah, actually, like I got interested in programming during my BCA. Only. Okay. So I started learning web development in PHP, uh, like during my BCA. So I made one small project in PHP as well in my final semester. But at that time, I just like knew little things regarding development. I was not that much serious. It was just for sake of like college, uh, like we have a like project in a curriculum. Mm-hmm. So like, and also I studied data structures in my like BCA, but I was not that much serious and didn't knew like. frankly i didn't know that this was a, a, that important for us to get a job and so like uh, same goes for the mca like in mca i learned java javascript but like uh, i made couple of projects in php again like but those were like only for college curriculum mm-hmm. so like i didn't knew in, uh, like much of programming like but i was good like i was able to grasp the concept of programming then at like uh, in final semester of my mca uh, as i told you i joined like uh, as an intern in rbc technologies Okay, mm-hmm. so there like my, everything like started changing. So I learned Android development there. I learned Angular and like uh, Node JS there. I started working on like uh, real time projects. So I uh, I started taking things seriously. And I, in internship, uh, I would like to mention like uh, most of your audience might know Prabhu Deep. Yes. Okay? So I met him there. He was from my college only, but he was in B Tech CS team. But I didn't knew him earlier. Yeah. So he helped me really like uh, in my journey. So like as uh, you know, he had like many backlogs in his career. But like he uh, even though he he had like many backlogs, but still he had like I think uh, more than ten offers in hand like during the last semester. So like he really inspired me and he helped me like uh, especially in DSA part. So he told me like this is very important. We should learn like to uh, like as a fresher, DSA is like uh, very important because companies majorly prefer DSA. Mm-hmm. Like if if you are like giving interview as a fresher. Now Manpreet, we will talk more about uh, your new job role, new company. So now you are working with uh, amazing startup Yolo dot AI. So how did you get the interview opportunity for the same? And in the interview process, or let's say before or even during the shortlisting process. did they focus on your degree and college from um, like i heard from my friends like in bangalore mm-hmm. about this startup jalo i heard like uh, they are a very good culture a very good company going at a like a very good pace okay. so like uh, when i was on my notice period i already have like uh, three four offers like including paytm as well nice so uh, like i uh, like messaged one recruiter from yellow.ai at linkedin so like i asked him like uh, regarding like full stack web web development position so he said like uh, like uh, he scheduled my interviews they never asked my like degree like what i have what i have done like uh, what are my marks they never consider those things like only like one time they asked my degree that was like for documentation <laughs> purpose that was after like the offer was released to me. okay most of the product based companies are like the uh, like modern startups they don't like focus on your degree or your marks but the problem with mca is like you don't have that kind of exposure in your college yeah. so like when i was fresher i didn't knew how to give interviews how to approach uh, like uh, i didn't use the linkedin that much i had profile but like i didn't knew how to get interviews mm-hmm. that is a major challenge Correct. i didn't knew like i should prepare for ds mm-hmm. so what is the interview process overall interview process of yellow.ai what all things they were focusing on during the interview so like uh, there were total four rounds in yellow ai okay. so like most of the time they were focusing on system design like so as i have like more than 3 years of experience so they were more focusing on system design okay. like first round was like mix of system design and a problem solving so they asked me a couple of uh, dsa questions one was on linked list and one was on array both are like medium level questions okay so and uh, in system design they asked me to design a like, social media feed just okay. like facebook or instagram social media feed i need to design okay in the first round and then in second round that was like completely focused on system design that was like a really long interview uh, so they uh, asked me to design a ticketing system like support ticketing system okay so in which like uh, 
customers will either like take it to any company so it should be auto assigned to like uh, uh, support engineers and that kind of system they uh, like ask me to design like the whole llt i design a whole load like from apis to database schema uh, i have to like uh, write the pseudo code for that okay. and apart from uh, like system design uh, they ask me couple of like uh, react questions uh, and uh, like uh, uh, what is like debouncing how we are implementing those kind of stuff in react or like uh, they asked me to write a code for virtual list how we like make a virtual list in react and uh, then uh, the third interview in third interview like it was like completely focused on javascript so they they asked me like some all the concept of javascript like uh, um, prototyping closures all the and and some questions on node js as well and uh, like it was like a front end um, more focused on front end html css uh, related questions and like some deep questions regarding uh, react there was like a last fourth round that was a cultural fit round with the like vp engineering at uh, okay. real ai so like it was like a more like a, a open discussion round but at the end uh, he also asked me like uh, to design a system like he gave me 10 minutes to like uh, quickly like uh, come up with the schema and api like uh, like at that time covid was like uh, really like the second wave was going on so uh, he asked me to design a system to like help patients to find out like beds in a hospital okay. majorly they focused on system design share some important tips and resources which you followed during the interview processes because you were the working professional you were working in another company and along with that you were preparing for next companies right so uh during that preparation what all things you applied what all things you focused and what all resources you used yeah so like uh, one thing i would like to mention first is like never ever leave like uh, the practicing dsa mm. so like i used to do this like uh, like uh, like at least if you have a good command over dsa uh, at least try like one question or two question per week do not leave it like uh, so like keep practicing uh, like uh, re- keep it regular dsa practice and apart from dsa like if someone wants to be like web developer or like a front end developer so what like most of the freshers even i did that they like they assume they knew they didn't know html and css part they kind of like skip that so like they directly jump into like angular or uh, like react frameworks they directly start using bootstrap that is okay but like i will suggest first try to learn like the basics of css try to make some static websites like uh, only in pure css and html no javascript nothing else just try to like uh, like search for good themes on internet try to just copy them do not use bootstrap or any other framework and then uh, learn like the core javascript part try to make dynamic projects using javascript try to make a router try to make like virtual list like debouncing throttling those concept like uh, most of these concept uh, interview will uh, like interview will focus on so like try to make like projects in plain javascript then okay. after that you should like learn any framework like uh, if you are like interested in backend as well you should uh, like, learn node js and react angular vue js whichever like framework you are comfortable with you should start like first you should focus on basic thing and uh, some resources i would like to mention is like uh, uh, first one is akshay sani like the namaste javascript courses is like really good it helped me a lot like so and yes. uh, one guy that is aditya varma for data structures especially for dynamic programming dynamic programming yeah. apart from this like i would suggest try to read documentation try to make a habit of reading documentation instead of like searching for any solution on youtube or stack overflow like uh, searching on random websites try to go to documentation try to read it that way you will have a more clarity how things are working under the hood uh, do you really think working in a startup is a good idea at least in this pandemic time where we have seen lots of destruction in the it industry right in at least in the 2020 so do you really think in this time or even like in near future it is it a really good idea to work in a startup working in a startup has its own pros and cons so like as a like startup work will be little more mm-hmm. it is not like you are you have to work like a 15 hours a day it is not like that so some people have like misconception basically it depends on company to company like but like for me i was like only like working like 8 to 10 hours not like 10 is like sometimes i have to work mm-hmm. like mainly i was like on average i used to work on 8 mm-hmm. hours like daily so like i was like uh, like if you are a fresher and if you want to make a career in like a development uh, like uh, whether it's a web or like back end or any machine learning in, in any field you want to go mm-hmm. you should definitely join a startup because the learning curve is very great you will like uh, get hands on like very new technologies and you will like handle many responsibilities like right. even if you like uh, join like a big company there you are like you will be assigned like some particular responsibility you have to like if you are front end guy you have to work on front end only like or you might be making some comments but like uh, in startup you will be working on back end as well you will work on db sometimes you also work on like uh, deployments and all the stuff so mm-hmm. like learning is really good 
in stuff. Okay. And like even nowadays, startup pays really well. Like even some startups match like the CTC of like a big fan companies as well. What would you advise to my audience, at least the aspiring students who are not from that uh, good colleges and not those popular streams like B Tech, uh, CS, IT, and all? I mean, targeting BSc, BC, MCA guys. What would you suggest to them? How would you motivate them? Yeah, okay. So there is one um, guy on YouTube. His name is Shitesh Chaudhary. So he is like, uh, I really enjoyed his videos. Yeah. So once he said in the video, like, um, like most of the youth, like, uh, they were like, uh, you are like, marks doesn't matter, your paper doesn't matter, exam doesn't matter. So that part is correct. But once he said that, like, your marks doesn't matter, your degree doesn't matter, but your effort does. So, like, you should do efforts. So even if we compare ourselves with IITs or like big colleges, right? Mm -hmm. So like uh, they will like get like uh, like twenty LP, thirty LP packages and, like, as a fresher. Correct. But what we do uh, never look is like they did a very hard work from like school. Correct. They did a very hard work to crack the IIT exams. They did a very hard work like in their college as well. They did internship. They did like projects. So like one should do efforts. One should like do not leave uh, like uh, learning things. Mm -hmm. Like you should be very consistent. Things will like uh, come on track. Uh, you will eventually you will get job. Okay. Like even I, like before my career, I had this fear like oh, whether I will get job or not. But like uh, like in just two years, I had like uh, five six offers. Nice. So you should be consistent. What you are trying to do, like whether you are a UI developer or like or like you are a backend or whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. you just need to be consistent and you, and you have to make efforts. Yeah, that's that's. There, there is no shortcut <laughs> to success. That is like a most cliche line, but that is true. There is no shortcut. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, the part which you said, uh, your efforts will matter and the consistency. I mean, these are the two shortcuts. You can say direct shortcuts to uh, like just uh, place yourself in that kind of position. So I think that was really good, Manpreet, whatever experience you have shared with my audience. And I think it will boost up the confidence of uh, those people who were reaching out to me, like uh, uh, bring some folks uh, who have done BC, MC and crack good companies. So I think this will be an eye opener uh, podcast for them. So uh, again, thank you so much, Manpreet, from my side and my audience side. It was really great to have you on yeah, the podcast. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks a lot for giving me like this opportunity to share my experience. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> so that was all about in this podcast, guys. I hope you would have enjoyed this conversation with Manpreet and whatever experience he has shared with us. If you did, then make sure to give a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. And if you are new to the channel, then subscribe and don't forget to press the notification icon. That is really important. I will see you guys in the next weekend with amazing podcasts and inspiring journeys. Till then, just stay safe, stay home, take care of yourself and your family too.